Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we're going to make probably the most complex Damascus I've ever attempted. And I'm going to do it with a friend. We're going to be doing a little road trip to my friend Rick Hall's house. We're going to make some um, really cool Damascus. We're calling this one Ocean Sunset. So let's go down to the table, take a look, and I'll explain what we're going to make. The pattern we're going to do today is inspired by this pattern. This is a piece of Damascus from Kelly Vermeer Vela. And if you don't know who Kelly is, she is a two-time Forge and Fire champion, a journeyman smith, and just an all-around excellent bladesmith. Uh, I got a chance to go to her shop in January when I was um, doing the performance test for my journeyman. And um, they were making this, uh, her and a couple other master smiths, we're making this Damascus. So I got a chance to watch them do this pattern. So I want to do a little spin on this pattern. Basically, we're going to be making this. Imagine this on the side mirrored with a 3D printed sun up here. And we're going to call this one Ocean Sunset. So, pretty cool. Um, this one is a, a high layer Damascus in this core, a low layer here with a piece of pure nickel down this, uh, this, this the center here that makes it kind of look like, you know, uh, waves. We want to see the waves crashing. So, let's do it. The first thing we're going to do with this pattern, I'm going to be making this 3D printed sun here. So, let's get on with that. So to make the sunset portion of our ocean sunset Damascus, I've decided to use this 3D printed uh, canister technique. So I've printed this 3D uh, image of a sun with some rays. We're going to fill the center and the rays with nickel, 4% um, uh, nickel added to uh, 1084. And then we're going to put it in this canister, which I've sprayed with white paint. And then we're going to fill the rest with straight, uh, I think it's 1095 powder actually. So let's get it done. Now it's time to get this canister in the forge, let it soak for a good long while. This thing is three inches across, so it's gonna take a long time to heat up. We gotta make sure we forge this equally on all sides so we don't distort the sun. I miss videoing it, but I took the canister off and here we are now squaring it up, compressing it even more. This is all we're going to do with the sun for now. I'll take it to Rick's place and we'll finish it off there. To make things go faster at Rick's place, I'm going to be forging this piece of Damascus at home. Let's do that. Here I've got a stack of 25 layers of alternating 1084 and 15 and 20 steels. We're going to forge weld these together, draw them out, and then restack them because we need about 100 layers. I've got this billet just about where I want it. 
Now we're going to just take it to the flat dies, get it all nice and flat, make sure the corners are nice and square, and cut it up and get ready for a restack. Here we are after the restack. I ended up cutting up into five pieces, so we're going to be at about 125 layers. Once I get to Rick's place, remember our billet is going to look like this. I'm doing the top section, he's doing the bottom, so they need to mate up. So we agreed the dimensions would be 2 inches by 10 inches. Mine is going to be half an inch thick and his is going to be an inch thick. I'm here at Rick Hall's shop, my buddy Rick Hall, fellow journeyman bladesmith. Uh, we're going to do a cool pattern today. Yes. Uh, I think we're calling it Ocean Sunset. Ocean Sunset. We're going to yep. be able to make this happen? I think so. I think so. We're lucky. A little bit of heat, a little bit of meat. <laughs> we have this beautiful power hammer to play with. I'm quite excited about that one. All right, let's get it done. And we'll get her done. Here's all the pieces to our starting billet. My steel, Rick's steel, and a piece of nickel to go in the middle. Looking back, I wish we would have reconsidered putting this weld all the way down the sides. This ended up giving us a bit of a pain grinding out later. Rick has a 50 ton press. It did a good job of setting the welds on this billet. In order to draw out the billet, we moved to the big blue power hammer. Rick started out and gave me a demo. We need to go from this down to this. This is Dennis' first time on a power hammer. It came pretty natural to him since he has done so much forge welding under the press. Now that we've got the billet drawn out to what we need, it's time to put in the C's. So here Rick is knocking in the corners and making it look like this. Now we're pressing down on the billet to give us our C's. Here's Dennis doing what he does best and what I hate doing the most. Here we are at the first restack. You sure can see those strips of nickel. Here we are repressing after a restack. We only hit it one time to make sure that we have a good weld. That keeps you from moving it around too much, which could cause separation. Now that we got the restack forge welded, we're back to the power hammer to draw it down to something like this. Now we're back to the press just to flatten it out and square up the corners to get ready for the next restack. Here's a shot of what it looks like inside. Here we are stacked up again, ready to go back in the forge. Now our billet looks like this. If you get a little rhombus, you want to correct it right away. Keep it from getting too out of hand. Here we are again, back at the power hammer. Drawing it out, we're going to end up with a billet like this.
we need a one inch square so we move to the squaring dies just to get this nice and square and flat here you can see the progression of what we did today this is the end of day one at Rick's shop you guessed it it's time to have a beer Here we are back at it the next morning. We've cut up that one inch bar into five pieces, stacked it up tall, and now we're gonna forge weld that together. Now Rick is pressing this on an angle to purposely put a rhombus into the billet. That's gonna make those waves kinda of have an angle to them. It'll look cool, just wait. Now we're cutting off those edges that we rhombused, uh, and then we're gonna cut this billet in half so we can mirror it and forge it back together. Here's what happens when you run out of propane on your big bottle. Gotta put it in water to keep it from freezing. Now we're gonna work on that sun a little bit. Rick and I decided we wanted some extra steel on the top of the sun to use as the tang because we didn't want to deform any of the rays. So here we're forge welding some extra steel on top. And now finally our last forge weld. We're forging the sunset to the ocean. This is a very tricky weld going horizontal and vertical at the same time. Well, folks, we're all done. I'm really happy with the billet. I think it looks amazing. You guys will see the glamour shots in a little bit. But thanks so much, uh, Rick, for having me at the shop. Wonderful having you. Uh, it's been super fun. We had a few trials and tribulations. You always do, you know. If, you, if you're not getting working through mistakes, you're not a knife yeah, maker. That's right. <laughs> all about problem solving, folks. I always say that. Yeah. But uh, I think you guys would be impressed with uh, the billet. Uh, I'm... I'm, I'm really happy with it, and uh, I can't wait to see what you make out of yours. Yeah, it's definitely a different billet, um, different than anything I've ever done. Stepped out of my comfort zone a little bit. Dennis has a way of making you do that um, for the betterment. It's, a, uh, it's been a fun experience, and thanks so much for having me. You bet, man. Anytime. All right. We're going to do it again. I, I, okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks. We'll see you on the next one. See you later. All right, folks. Here is the final reveal. I think it looks amazing. Uh, let's try to get a zoom in on it here. You can see the uh, the waves, the sun. This will be the tang. Um, it's really um, fine right now, but this is only, uh, what is it, about six inches long. Uh, this whole thing is going to get drawn out, so this pattern will widen quite a bit and get stretched which will um, make it look even better because right now you the center part is so fine you uh, you can't even see it um, at least I'm not picking it up on the camera but once it's stretched out um, it'll probably look somewhat like this and this will be even longer so I'm really happy with the pattern um, I think we achieved what we wanted uh, what we're also going to end up doing is fish mouthing the bottom so that this kind of comes together at a point. Because there's nickel here, we won't want that on our cutting edge. But um, it was a really, really fun project, uh, and it was fun going to, um, to Rick's place. Uh, I want to mention, if you're looking for um, classes and you're in the Reno area, Reno, Nevada, Go check out Rick Hall. He does beginner classes, Damascus classes, uh, forging classes, you name it. Uh, his information will be down in the uh, video description. So uh, big thanks to Rick for having me at the shop. Uh, I think this pattern turned out amazing.